The D's haven't won a final in Victoria since 2018. And their last finals win? The 2021 Grand Final. Sure, they've got a strong hand in the draft this year, but if they don't land a ready-to-go legit key forward, one of the most talented backlines and midfields in history could be remembered as the dynasty that never was. Welcome back to AFL from LA. I'm your host, Cindy, and I'm standing here outside the Los Feliz Theater. Opened in 1934, it's one of the few remaining original Hollywood movie houses here in Los Angeles. Talk about the Terminator. Was Sam Walsh sent from the future to bring the Premiership Cup safely back to Carlton? In his first two finals, Walshy has amassed 63 disposals, 28 contested, 15 inside 50s, 14 tackles, and and two goals. I don't know what's more impressive, Sam's numbers or Melbourne's behind count. 16-28 in their two finals. That's 36% accuracy, kids, and that's not including out on the fulls. Look, the Blues did what all good teams do, found a way to grind out a thrilling two-point win and steamroll into their first prelim since Y2K was a thing. They only had four wins after round 13. Weeders, huge. Crippa, beast mode. Doc, TDK, Newman, unbelievable. Hello, Newman. May was a general down back, and Viney and Oliver were, well, Viney and Oliver. But they tumble out of finals in straight sets again. Not the back-to-back -back Goody was after. I don't understand how Brown and Grundy were in the stands eating chips when Ariel presence inside 50 was exactly what the Ds needed. And to not even play sub Josh Shackey, another tall forward option? The Blues are 10 and 1 since round 15. They go to the Gabba with not only Brisbane god Michael Voss in charge and a sea of traveling fans, but a thing every team craves going this deep into finals momentum. Get the popcorn ready, kids. Saturday's gonna be huge. If you're enjoying the show, which come on, let's face it, I know you are, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps more Aussies get to see the show and helps me make more Aussie friends. Home ground advantage? What's that? The Giants pulled the plug on the Powers Finals campaign, silencing 40,000 pair fans in Adelaide to go into their second prelim against Collingwood in four years. They won that one. What's that? You have to speak up. I can't hear you over this big, big sound. In the battle of the fruit bowl, get it? Pear, orange. The Giants were at their scary best. Ruthless at the contest, explosive on the spread, and if they kicked straight, they would have iced the game at half. Time. Jedi Master Stephen Canelio was at another level, as were Cal Ward, Karen Briggs, and Lockie Whitfield. Hogan, Riccardi, Toby's one and two all brought it. And do I even have to mention that back six? Sure, Port came back in the second half, but they never really looked like they were going to win. Maybe betting on injured players McKenzie and Dixon wasn't the wisest move. And getting smacked in stoppages and conceding nine goals there didn't help. The heat is already coming on Hinkley and his two-year contract contract extension. Sure, Port's been booted out in straight sets yet again. And yeah, Ken's only had four finals wins since 2014. But can you really sack a coach whose team, I mean playing group, finished top three? As for the Orange, is there a riper, juicier team in the finals right now? The Pies have been the team to beat all year. But are they the team to beat this Friday? Yes. The game is in Melbourne at the G in front of 95,000 mostly Pies fans. But if there's one thing these Giants have shown us in the last 14 weeks, anywhere, anytime.